suppose you are given with a finitely generated tree and also you know that length of each path is finite there. Then our question is does it mean that or does it imply that the whole tree is finite. Okay? So, it is clear that if number of paths is also finite then the tree has to be finite, okay? but we are not given that the number of paths is finite, we are only given uh, that it is finitely generated. Right? So, we thought that it needs a proof that is the reason. Then once we see that there is a proof, see sometimes infinite things are easy to handle than the finite things. So, we will take the contrapositive of the statement, we will pose the problem as if it is a finitely generated infinite tree, does it imply that there exists one infinite path in the tree or not, this is the contrapositive statement. Okay? So, let us try to prove that. Every finitely generated infinite tree has an infinite path. This is what we want to prove. Okay? So, this is called Koenig's lever. Of course, we have realized the truth of it, but now we want to have proof, because it is not, uh, it does not follow obviously. Huh? So, we need a proof. Okay. So, how do we go about the proof? You want to really find out a path which whose length should be infinite. Right? So, now think of the tree itself, suppose the tree is given, it is finitely generated, we know it is infinite. Okay? Now, remove the root from it. So, once you remove the root, you will get finite number of subtrees, because it is finitely generated root has only finite number of children. Right? So, now the children of the root become the root of the new subtrees okay? and there are finite number of subtrees. Fine? Now, the question is what can be about the finiteness, infiniteness of the subtrees? At least one of them has to be infinite because if all of them are finite, then total number will become finite. Right? So, you are concerned about finiteness or infiniteness of trees, that is why you are taking it. So, there is at least one infinite tree there. So, take one such. Now, there remove the tree. Okay? So, again you get number of subtrees, some finite number of subtrees. There one infinite tree at least one infinite tree is there. So, take one such continue the process. So, what happens is at each n nth stage you will get that there is another in the n plus 1th stage a sub tree which is infinite. Okay? So, now take the sequence of the sub trees, it is an infinite sequence because of that property for each n you get there is a stage n plus 1 which is having an infinite sub tree. Therefore, this sequence of sub trees is infinite. Right? Now, once you take the sequence of subtrees, take the roots of all those subtrees, you get one infinite path, that is the proof. Okay? Is it clear? Hmm? So, you will not write it or you want to write it? Huh? We will write it? Okay. So, let tau 0 be an infinite tree which is finitely generated. Okay. Then, what we do? Let R 0 be its root. Now, remove R 0 to get a finite number of sub trees 
of uh, 0. So, at least one of them is an infinite tree. Since tau 0 is infinite, okay. then what we want is take that take one of such or one such subtree which is infinite. So, let tau 1 be one such infinite subtree of tau 0. Let R 1 be its root. Okay. Again, remove R one from tau one to get a finite number of subtrees of tau one. So, at least one of these subtrees is infinite, since tau 1 is infinite. Then let tau 2 be one such infinite subtree of tau one having root tau r two. So I'll not write the induction step here. By induction, it follows that. that we have a sequence of trees tau 0, tau 1, tau 2 and so on with roots r 0, r 1, r 2 and so on and each tau n plus 1 is a subtree of is really an infinite subtree of tau 1. Okay. So, this sequence is an infinite sequence. So, once we do not write anything it means infinite sequence otherwise we will write finite sequence then the path r 0, r 1, r 2 and so on is an infinite path in tau 0. That is the end of the proof. Okay. See, usually induction proves only for finite things, finite stages. Okay, a property is satisfied by some n. So, whatever be that n, that property will be true. Now, you are telling that there is an infinite thing. It is a construction. So, this means your inductive step is important. It says for every n, there is another n plus one, which exists. Therefore, the path is infinite. Okay. So, it needs that argument. So, once this is over, our we can come back to our original question. So, you take its contraposition, 
which says that if a tree is finitely generated and uh, all its paths are finite, then the tree has to be finite. Okay. That is what we wanted. Right. So, we can state our finiteness theorem for the tabula. Suppose, some uh, set of propositions is inconsistent, okay. then you can find one finite subset of it, which is also inconsistent. That is what finiteness theorem for P C was. Its proof is of finite length. So, you take away all the propositions used in that proof in P C. So, that itself entails the last one. Right. That was the scenario in PC, but here it is not a sequence of propositions. There it was easy because it is a sequence. Now you have paths and the whole tree is there. So you have to take care of the tree itself, right? And there it is easier because from the premises each one follows in a proof. Here it is not that. It may follow, it may not follow. One proposition that is coming, right? So you have to find some relation between them, similar relation to connect with the semantics also. So, first let us see the finiteness. So, finiteness says that let sigma be a set of propositions w a proposition then what happens? We will have two formulations as earlier. Uh, so, we take sigma is inconsistent, then it has a finite subset which is inconsistent, right. So, it should be non empty, right. Let us start with the non empty set. Suppose sigma is a non empty set which is inconsistent, then it has a finite subset. The gamma, which is inconsistent. So this is for consistency and inconsistency. Similarly, you can have the formulation for entailment. Okay. If you think of a reductio ad absurdum, but here reductio ad absurdum is inside the definition itself. When you say sigma entails something, it means you have to consider sigma union not W and a tabula for it. Fine. So, it is there inside. Then you can say sigma entails w, then what happens? Uh, there is a finite subset gamma of sigma such that gamma entails w. Okay. So, this entailment is now in P t by analytic tabula, propositional analytic tabula, not by P c as earlier, okay. we are not writing it explicitly. Okay. So, how do you proceed? Just see what is written, then you can find out, it is not difficult. Suppose you take this sigma is inconsistent. Okay. Once it is inconsistent, you have a consider only the systematic tabula. Say it is ordered as written, some ordering is there. Now, in the systematic tabula, you see that it is closed because it is inconsistent, right. Now, each path, closed path, has to be finite, it is finitely generated, right. So, now Koenig's lemma says the whole tabula is finite. Okay. Now, if the tabula is finite, then take all the premises occurring in the tabula. So, that tabula itself is a tabula for that set of premises, you do not have to go to sigma. right? Whatever premises from sigma are occurring in the tabula, the tabula is for that. right? 
and that set is finite because it is a subset of the set of propositions in the tabula that is your gamma. Is it clear? Gamma should be a finite, a proper subset or not necessarily? Just a subset. Sigma can be finite itself, so everything may be used. You just take p, comma, not. Right? We are just saying finite. Fine. So even if sigma is infinite, you will always get a finite. That is what you want. So it is really crucial to think about infinite to finite. Finite to finite, it does not give any meaning. Right? It may be there will be many more propositions in sigma which are not used in the tabula that is fine, but we are not speaking about that it is really infinite to finite reduction. Okay. So, how do you go about the proof now? One. Huh? Let sigma be inconsistent then a systematic tabula Tau for sigma is a closed tabula. Okay. So, it is a closed tabula means each path in tau is a closed path, right. So, that means each path being closed in tau is finite. Tau is also binary, right? It is a finitely generated. So, tau is a binary tree by conex lemma. Tau is finite. Okay. So, tau is finite means number of nodes in tau is finite. So, once this is done, what we do? We have to construct gamma. Fine. So, take gamma as the intersection of tau with sigma, right? That is what we thought. We will not write intersection, it is a tree that is a set. Huh? Okay. So, we will say take gamma as the set of propositions. from sigma that occur in tau. Then we see that first thing is gamma is a finite subset of sigma. Second, tau is a closed tabula. for gamma that is all we wanted. Okay. We want one finite subset gamma of sigma which is inconsistent. So, that is what we have got. Okay. Then second should be easy to prove. How to prove second? See all the while we have not come to semantics yet, huh? we are still in the tabula in the proof system, consistency entanglement in the proof system only, we have to come to that slowly. Huh? Okay, now, what about this? Suppose sigma entails w in p t, so that means there is a uh, closed tabula for sigma union not w by definition. Okay? So, we want to produce a gamma of sigma such that gamma union not w has a closed tabula. Sigma union not w is only the previous. Uh, hmm. Suppose sigma union not w we consider, yeah. it is inconsistent. Uh. Then so, there exists at least one closed branch. Uh, there exists a, he wants to apply one. Oh, okay. 
So there exists a finite subset of sigma union not w which is inconsistent. Okay. Then suppose that is sigma zero. Mm. So sigma zero may have not w in it, may not have not w in it, isn't it? Because we want in that form. Is inconsistent. Sigma zero union not W is also inconsistent. Right. So sigma zero entails. That needs a proof. You have not oh. proved one concept. But that's easy to prove, right? Just add not W at the root with the same tuple. <laughs> Don't use it. How does it matter? Right? So at the root, but last proposition. Huh? Root but last. So systematic tuple has not used it yet it will require next test, but before that it is closed. <laughs> so, that itself is a tabula proof of that. Okay. Then, then that sigma 0 becomes your gamma, hmm. if it does not contain, right. Now, if it contains, so if it contains then hmm. sigma not uh, union not w is inconsistent. Inconsistent. Oh, you think sigma it is not there, itself not is w, w itself is there. Then you have sigma dash which is uh, such that sigma not is sigma dash union not w. Hmm, you just take away that not w from it, that is your gamma. <laughs> is that okay? Why do you want to take away? Because gamma should be a finite subset of sigma, not of sigma union not w. Right, that is the problem. It also entails w because that union not w is inconsistent that is already there. So, all that you have to take care is that should be a finite subset of sigma not of sigma union not w there only some care is required right. So, let us write the proof. So, suppose sigma entails w then we get sigma union not w as inconsistent. by 1 there is there is sigma 0 a finite subset of sigma union not w which is inconsistent. So, by 1 we have a finite subset of sigma union not w which is inconsistent. Right? So, our plan is to start with gamma which is equal to sigma 0 minus no, not w. Then what we see is gamma union not w is equal to sigma 0 union not w. Right? As sigma 0 is a subset of sigma union not w and not w does not belong to gamma, gamma is a subset of sigma. Is it clear? See in sigma 0 there is a possibility that not w is there, right, but gamma is a subset of sigma 0 where not w is not there. So, all the propositions in gamma are from sigma 0, but that none of them is equal to not w, right. And sigma 0 can have not w or propositions from sigma. So, not w is not there. So, all that remains in sigma 0 are from sigma. Gamma is a subset of that. So, gamma has to be containing propositions from sigma only because only exception was not w and not w is not there. Fine. So, gamma is a subset of sigma, but gamma is also a subset of sigma 0, it is equal to sigma 0 minus w which is finite. So, gamma is a finite subset of sigma. Right? Gamma is a finite subset of sigma, gamma union not w equal to sigma 0 union not w which is inconsistent. Right? Therefore, gamma entails w. 
that is what we require. Not W does not belong to gamma, does not belong to okay. So, here we have to take care of that reasoning that gamma has to be a subset of sigma and that happens because not w does not belong to gamma. Okay. Is it clear? So, second part is also proved. This is about your finiteness of uh, consequence or inconsistence. Now, if you see the contribution, it says if every finite subset of a non empty set is consistent, then the whole set is also consistent. Hmm? It is something like your induction process. If every finite things are there consistent, you see the tabula. It is there exists one open path in every finite subtree, in every subtree of that tabula, then the tabula also has an open path. Hmm? Right? So, there really Koenig's lemma plays the role. Okay, our main concern was how to connect this proof theoretic notions to the semantics. Consistency and satisfiability should be connected somehow, that is what we want. Now, let us look at a rule, any tabular rule uh, we have motivated by the semantics itself, right. So, it might look something like this, if you have a proposition x, then it can give rise to some y for example, not not a gives a right, it does not have more children than 1. Now, what happens or it might be x to y z, there are two children which are stacked right or there might be two children who are branched out right. So, these first two types are called stacking rules, this is a branching rule. Okay. So, suppose we have this kind of rules, all the three kinds of rules are there. Hmm? Now, what was our semantic observation? X is true if both these are true, or same thing as if x is true, if and only if y is true, double negation, for example. Right? Here, x is true uh, if and only if at least one of y or z is true that is how we branched them. right? So, this is our first observation about the tabular rules. Now, we have done it only for and and r not for others. Right? So, you have to verify it for others also it is true that is easy because if you have implies for example, p implies q is equivalent to not p or q then it is converted to r. So, you can just use the equivalences to see it. Right? So, this is our observation if it is a stacking rule. Okay? like this, these two are the stacking rule, this is a branching rule. Then what happens? If it is a stacking rule and i is any interpretation, then you say i of x is 1 if and only if i of y is 1 and i of z is 1. So, let us write equal to, right. And for the branching rules, you have i of x equal to 1 if and only if 1 of i of y equal to 1 or i of z equal to 1, both may be true also. So, you do not write either r, right? It is simple r. At least one of them is true. This is what happens. Now, if you use induction and look at a tabula, what does it say? This is one of the rules and tabula is generated by using many such instances of the rules. Now, in the tabula what does it say? There is no leaf, one of the huh? well, let us see an example that will clarify. Let us see and then we take say R or S uh, not Q. Huh? Okay. Let us try this. Now, this I can have R S and with this I have not P Q, I have not P Q. Okay. 
Now, let us look at this first. So, when I use the uh, tabular rule for the first time, there what happens? It says uh, a branching rule B says R R S is true if and only if one of R R S is true. That is what it says, that is clear. Now, come to the next stage. I have used P implies Q here. Now, here it says P implies Q is true at least one of not P not Q is true. Now, when I take both of them, what does it say? It says both of them are true if and only if at least one of the paths is true, right? Huh? Is it clear? It is not a leaf, because those leaves earlier they are in the path now and the new leaves have come. So, another leaf there will come in another path. So, this is what it should give. Hmm? So, in the tabula, if you take all the propositions, all those propositions will be true if and only if at least one path of the tabula is true, is satisfiable. Hmm. We can close it. Yes. Then, uh, in any inconsistency, if it exists, it will be a leaf, right? It will be closed. It will be closed. And the path will be closed. So, problem is do not look at the leaf. In tabula, you have to look at the path always. No. A path will contain so many other things. No? You have to check whether the whole path contains a complementary pair of literals or not, then only it will close. But one case you can do that, if bottom is coming there, right? if bottom is coming as a leaf then yes, you have not top somewhere, so you get bottom as a stacking rule. Okay. So, what we observe is, if i is a model of sigma and tau is a systematic tabula for sigma. Then there exists a path say rho in the tabula tau such that I is a model of rho. Huh? We will write the full sentence. This is what it says. Okay? And the proof will be by induction from S and V. Essentially, it is this. Huh? So, you have to go for the proof, take induction on the uh, on what? On the length of the longest path in the table, <laughs> because you do not know where it will occur. So, if it occurs, if it is closed, it is fine, longest path is closed, it is fine, does not matter, because your it is a conditional thing, if it is open then. So, I have induction on that. Okay. We will not prove it now, I leave it for you. Then we can really come to uh, connect with the semantics. Now, you have started connecting with the semantics. So, this is adequacy of P t. Okay. We start with sigma, this is a set of propositions. W a proposition. If sigma is non empty, then sigma is consistent if and only if sigma is satisfied. You can say inconsistent if and only if it is unsatisfied. 
they are the same thing and our second formulation is with w if sigma or sigma entails w in p t if and only if sigma semantically entails w. Okay. So, second one follows from the first easily because this if and only if sigma in one not w is inconsistent by definition of tabula and this if and only if sigma in one not w is unsatisfiable by redux word epsilon then it will follow from first. So, first one only we have to prove okay. let us try. So, suppose sigma is consistent so we are concerned with uh, cis double s right one cis is consistent there is one uh, tabula which doesn't close but we can consider the systematic tabula right so let tau be a systematic tabula for sigma. So, there is an open path in tau because sigma is consistent right every path does not close there that is why it is consistent otherwise it would have been inconsistent. So, let rho be an open path there exists. So, we are writing let rho open path in tau. Okay. Then what happens? Hmm? So, this contains all the premises from sigma because it is an open path, it is a systematic tabula, right? Systematic tabula and open path, so it contains all the premises of sigma. Fine. So, tau contains all uh, propositions from sigma. But we want to show what sigma is satisfiable. We will show tau to be satisfiable, right? That is enough monotonicity, it is a subset of tau. Fine? So, to show tau is satisfiable, first thing is we see it is open path. So, bottom does not belong to tau, it does not have a pair of or a complementary pair of laterals. Huh? Rho, so rho is the path. So, in rho, we do not have bottom, we do not have a complementary pair of laterals, right. So, what you can do is try to find out what are the laterals used in that you can define a function from there to anywhere right and it can be extended to a boolean values that is the procedure right so let l be the set of literals occurring in row define one function from i uh, define i from l okay. I mapping each literal in l to 1. We need a partial function right. If you need all others you say all others literals you put 0 does not matter fine. Then what happens? this i is a boolean valuation because p not p does not occur and we have the s b rule that is under the boolean valuations right. So, once i is a boolean valuation i is also a model of rho again because of that observation fine. So, you see that i is a model of rho then i is a model of sigma. Done. So, conversely, suppose 
suppose sigma is satisfiable. So, our aim is to show that it is consistent, sigma should be consistent. Okay. Now, how do we proceed? We are starting the other way around. To show that it is consistent, we have to say that take the systematic table of our sigma okay, in that ordering, then there is an open path that is what we want to show. So, conversely, suppose sigma is satisfiable. But you, if you take that as finite again, you have to go via the finiteness. Huh. You have to again go via the finiteness. Huh. Okay. So we have one i, which is a model of sigma. When? So then, in tau, which is systematic tabula for sigma, we have rho such that. I is a model of all the propositions of rho, right. Now, since I is a model of all the propositions in rho, rho cannot have bottom in it. If bottom occurs in rho, no interpretation can be a model of bottom. So, bottom does not occur in rho, right, does not occur in rho. And since it is a model of, there exists a model of rho there cannot be a complementary pair of laterals in it, because both cannot be satisfied simultaneously. right? So, there is no complementary pair of laterals in rho. So, rho is open. it can be closed, right. So, sigma is consistent. Fine. So, this is the adequacy of tabula. It is easier than P c, right. P c you have to extend it to somewhere else. Here you have the extension itself in the path, one such extension. It is not deductive closure, but it is deduction of the literals, which literals can be there, can be true, so that this will happen, that is how. Now, suppose you have proved only i is a model of sigma for finite sigma, right. Then, how do you modify that proof? How do you come to this? You have only if i is a model of a finite sigma, then you can have i is a model of that row in the systematic tabula. Okay. So, for finiteness, what do you do? How do you take care? How do you modify the proof? Okay, take it as an exercise. Huh? Think it is not difficult, just a bit you have to tweak it a bit, then you will get it, again using finiteness theorem or do it uh, through uh, contradiction. Say that it is satisfiable, but sigma is inconsistent, then come down to finite set and apply that, right. That might be easier, fine. So, let us summarize. Uh, today, what we have done is starting from Koenig's lemma, uh, we had gone to finiteness theorem. Then we had seen how the stacking and branching rules allow us to connect semantics with the tabula, right. So, specifically it is that theorem which helped us the model of a proposition if you take set of propositions and you take its tabula, systematic tabula, there is an open path there, right, of which that is a model. Uh, then using that we come to adequacy of tabula, okay. So, now Compactness is clear again, compactness of propositional logic can be derived from finiteness theorem. Is that okay? Because your entanglement in tabula is same thing as 
semantic entanglement, right. So, finite nice theorem is simply translated to propositional logic as compactness theorem. Is that clear? 